Hey everybody, God bless. Hope everybody's having a, a good Sabbath. I love you guys. And I want to talk about, <clears throat> open up with Satan and his tactics. And you guys, when somebody, um, take for instance, when somebody lies to you, okay? You find out somebody that you know, you have some sort of relationship, whether it be work, family, etc. They lie to you. And you find this out. And from that point on, they lose all credibility with you. And everything that they've done in the past and from that moment forward has no more weight and and be and comes into question and you guys that is not a um that is not a a Christ like thing to do and we've all been guilty of this in the past and this comes from the enemy this is how satan works um satan throughout our whole lives of them watching us in the divine through the divine um satan has gone before the lord and um accused us and still does accuse us of all of the things that we have done wrong and says to the lord because they have done this or they do this that they're they're no good they're not worthy you know they're you're and and he does these things but the lord looks at us and he looks at us in a in a different way and you guys, we cannot, just because th th this is what the enemy has done, this is where I'm going with this, okay? There's a lot, I'm getting a, from a lot of people, a lot of different people, and this isn't geared towards anybody, um, saying that, um, oh, that you're sounding religious, or that um, religion is is bad and wrong, and I will say this. All of the, the religions that are in the world, you guys, yes, they are all incorrect. All of them. None of them are in the whole entire truth. And we all know this, you guys. This is not a, this isn't a new revelation. We've, we've known this for a while. And so, um, that does not mean, you guys, that everything that they believe and everything that they preach and teach and say is incorrect. And um, you guys remember, we are going to judge, some of us are going to judge the angels. That's not what I'm saying. That's what the scriptures say. Um, in Revelation chapter 1, it says that He loves us and has washed away our sins with His blood. He has made us a line of kings and priests to serve God and Father. To Him then be glory and power forever. Amen. And so you guys we are in in the millennial reign you guys it is going to be a holy and religious type of environment but it's going to be the true religious environment it's going to be a way of life you guys and and we are going to pave a wave of glory for our father to come down and bring the new jerusalem to the earth so that he can dwell with us forever but right now if he were to do that you guys it would consume the entire world with its with its glory and beauty and majesty and perfection the world would not be able you know when an element when you heat something up too fast or you cool it too fast how it just breaks 
that's exactly what would happen to this world. We have to prepare the world in glory for the new Jerusalem to come down. But you guys, if you read in the book of Ezekiel, okay, that is, that is talking about, that gives you a sneak peek of what the world is going to be like in the millennial reign and we are going to be religious and it's and it's going to be the line uh, the the line of kings and priests the, uh we are called to be holy you guys and it's not bad to be holy it's bad to be but it, look in Matthew 15, 9, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. This is the problem right here, you guys. See, we cannot let Satan make us, make us um, think that just because, oh, just because this, you know, like, just because this entity you know, that they're not in the truth. That doesn't mean that everything they say, believe in, preach, and teach is not true. You guys, we have to be able, um, at least the ones who are chosen by the Lord of the line of kings and priests, we have to be able to look at and judge the things wrong that they've done and the things right that they've done. We can't just say, oh, you're associated with this part of church or this type of religion, so, you know, and that's what you believed, and so you're you're condemned. We can't do that, you guys. We have to judge righteously and correctly, okay? If somebody, if you were judging somebody right now, my brother or sister, and they came before you, and they were, they, uh, let's say, murdered somebody, murdered let's say a child okay let's say somebody did that um what were what i want you to really examine yourself okay and and really think of how you would go about judging that person and think about the way that god or jesus would judge that person and you guys i um you know, everybody's, you know, we all know that God is, God is the ultimate judge. But you guys remember, he's handing us off. It says in the scriptures that he's going to hand that responsibility off to some of us here on the earth. And so, just because that person, probably, you know, that let's say a murder, somebody murdered a, a child and came before me. I cannot go look back. I, I cannot disregard all of the good things that they've done in the past. I have to judge them according to exactly what they've done, what they've said, how they've lived their life. I can't just go, oh, you, you killed a child, and so um, we're, we're sending you to the chopping block. You can't do that, you guys. That's not judging righteously. That's the way that God judges us. And so the letter, in the letter of St. Jude, it says, My dear friends, at a time when I was eagerly looking forward to writing you about the salvation that we all share, I have been forced to write you now and appeal to you to fight hard for the faith which has been once and for all entrusted to the saints. Certain people have infiltrated among you, and they are the ones you had a warning about in writing long ago when they were when they were condemned for denying all religion turning the grace of our of our god into immorality and rejecting our only master and lord jesus christ so yes you guys it's not these doctrines of men in all of these churches it's not true and it, and it's not good um, but you guys see the commandments, it says, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. So teaching men that not obeying the commandments is okay, that you don't have to obey the commandments, right? 
he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And I don't know about you guys, but um, my goal is to be, to come to my fullness and that God has called me to be and to be the best person that God has called me to be. And no, that does not mean I, I'm not, I'm not um, saying that works get you into heaven because that's not true. That's, that, that, that's just simply not true. Um, and he said unto him, Why callest me good? There is no, there is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Here we go right here. These are the words of Jesus. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's love God with all your being and love your neighbor as yourself. And then if we look at John, first book of John, it says, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. You guys, and, and you guys, these are the words of Jesus, by the way. This is, Ab, this is our Abba in the flesh. And he said unto, and he that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. And you guys, you will see that with um, the movement in which they call the hyper grace movement, which I more properly um, renamed the commandment and covenant discourse movement. You will see that these good people, and it's not that everything they say is not true because they preach grace, you know, and, and a lot of what they say is true, but the whole truth is not in them. And you'll see that um, through their words and the things that they say and the things that they believe, the whole truth is not in them. And, um, and, and their, what, how they label themselves is, is exactly that. They call themselves grace preachers. They're not preachers or teachers of the word. They're strictly grace preachers, but there's many different facets and aspects to the word. Um, God, God didn't, you know, the Old Testament is still, um, it, it's still, it's all important, you guys. The Gospels and the Old Testament, it all goes hand in hand. And I promise you, if Jesus was here, he would tell you pretty much the same thing. We are called to be holy, you guys. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, because I am the Lord your God. That's Leviticus. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all that are upon the face of the earth. Where's Peter? I wanted to read. Okay, hold on. Let's see. 1 Peter 1. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conf uh, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who has called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. Since our Father since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear, for you know that it was... Okay, um, oh yeah, you guys listen to this. He has chosen before, he was chosen before the creation of the world, um, 
now that you have 